Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. As early as 1958, there's an article attributed to Walt Disney. Uh, it was called My Newest Dream, where he talks about everything coming up at the parks. And then he's saying that a haunted house would be coming in where a guest to the park could uh, walk through the haunted uh, rooms and gardens of this spooky house that they brought there. We're going to bring ghosts from all over the world. And we're making it very attractive to them, hoping, you know, they'll want to come and stay at Disneyland. So we're putting in wall-to-wall -wall cobwebs and we gave him creaky doors and creaky floors. Walt Disney approached Ken Anderson about designing the haunted house as a walk-through attraction. Ken did a complete layout blueprint for the attraction at that time, which would include scenes from Disney films like the ghosts that appear in Fantasia and Night on Bald Mountain, uh, the lonesome ghosts from the Mickey Mouse short, and the Headless Horseman from the Adventures of the Goodbye and Mr. Toad. Construction actually began on the Haunted Mansion long before it opened, and that's part of the great mystique of this attraction. And this led to just endless rumors about what was inside, what had happened, why did the attraction not open for six years. Everybody has friends and relatives who say they know somebody who went on the ride, and it's not the ride that was there now. It was so scary, it just, it was people who were having heart attacks. There was a story of a guest falling into a snake pit. One of the rumors was that Walt Disney really lives there. That's the second home. And that they just said it was a haunted mansion because they didn't want people to go there and bother Walt Disney. But then Walt went to England, and the reporters asked him what he was doing there, and he said, well, I'm visiting some of the old castles and mansions and uh, looking for ghosts who want to continue to practice their tricks. If you were a, a kid back then, you went through your whole kidhood waiting for this thing to open. The house was built in the early 60s and stood there all alone on the banks of the river with a sign on it that said, we're out collecting 999 ghosts. So as a kid growing up in that time period, there was the dutiful trek over to the gates and standing at the gates, reading that sign and wondering what's going to happen here. In comes the 1964 New York World Fair, which developed tremendous new technologies. And one of the technologies became the impetus for a ride system called the Omnimover. It's the ride system that never stops. It's a constant chain of ride vehicles all tied together, just going around in a, a continuous circle. And the designers in the Haunted Mansion realized this is our answer, because not only can we get a tremendous number of people through, we can surprise them. We can face them this way and then spin them suddenly to the left and reveal something exciting. The Omnimover also has the advantage of it's got speakers right inside the car with you. So you have a creepy voice right behind you narrating the whole adventure. Pirates of the Caribbean had Claude Coates and Mark Davis as collaborators. And after Pirates, the two went on to work on Haunted Mansion. But in this case, they each had a different idea about what the tone of the attraction should be. Claude Coates felt that it should be scary and frightening. And Mark Davis felt that it was Disney and should be more gag and humorous. And in the end, they sort of each got their day because the first half of the ride really is Claude Coates's, if you will, and it's all the environmental, more scary parts of it. And then the second half of the ride from the ballroom on is really more Mark Davis, particularly the graveyard, where it's lots of gags, lots of funny things. And so in some ways, it really satisfies both camps because for those who want the sort of eerie scary, you've got that. For those who want the classic Disney funny, you've got that. And in the end, I think it's important to realize that you know, Walt was creating a park for parents and children to have fun together. Mark Davis is the uh, master in charge of our house of illusions, or uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, a haunted mansion. Can you give a little idea what we're going to have in there? <laughs> yes, well, we're doing a lot of portraits that change right in front of your very eyes. As a matter of fact, one of our paintings here is based on Greek mythology. This is Medusa. She offended the goddess Athena, and as a result, Athena turned her into a gorgon. The coffin clock here that we're working on right now, we have a gypsy card that comes to life with ghosts inside of it. We have a candle man. 
These are just things that collected from all over the world. Just the weirdest things we could find. Yeah, we're also collecting real ghosts to bring you. You believe in ghosts, don't you, June? No. You don't? Not really. Well, let me take you over here and convince you that they do exist. We had two schools of thought on the haunted mansion. One was to make it scary, and one was to make it funny. So finally we decided it should be light and not, not real scary. Uh, and the lyrics kind of uh, pushed me in that direction of uh, prim grinning ghosts to mount to so show I. It was a dynamic period of development because this was also the real flowering of audio animatronics at the same time. So there were wonderful people who came out of the machine shop at the studio under Roger Brogy and they figured out how to make these characters move uh, with all the hydraulics and all the mechanical systems inside them. Yale Gracie was probably the father of illusions and magic stuff for the Haunted Mansion. He and Waythel Rogers had their own little place over here and they would do the little magic stuff and it made it interesting. Walt told Yale Gracie and uh, Lily Crump to play. And, you know, to them, that was magic because playing meant they could do anything they wanted. And, that, you know, within the confines of what the, the story idea was, at that time there really wasn't much of a story. It was more how can you create some effects that would uh, create the illusion of, of ghosts. They would get something together, and then we'd get called over and say, okay, here it is. What is it? And we had to figure out how to make it work day in, day out, 24 hours a day, to be able to put it into, into a show at Disneyland. My involvement came when we started doing the actual figures for the cemetery, which uh, were based on some of Mark's humorous ideas. The dog at the cemetery and uh, the raven and the pop-up heads which were actually post department. Awaken the spirits with your tambourine. Madame Leota was the effect that astonished more people when they went through the ride and I used to, it used to be very interesting to go on the rides or be in the rides and listen to the comments of the guests as they come through, how they thought that that was done. On the fiddle and strum, please answer the roll by beating the drum. A lot of visitors to the mansion uh, believe that the ghosts in the ballroom are holograms. They are not. It's actually a much older technique called Pepper's Ghost. 